r slash ask reddit, reddit, what's your never again story, 103 temperature, sicker than a dog from the flu and constipated, I was miserable, I took 4 fiber pills in the morning, and had hallucination fits for the next 4 to 5 hours, desperately trying to get some sleep, I took an ambient sleeping pill, extra strength, Woke up 9 hours later not constipated anymore, and having to do a load of laundry when I was 6, I distinctly remember my mom saying, don't lick that grill iron, or it will really hurt. I licked it. Time share presentation. I now know what hell is like 8 hours of my life I'll never get back. And of course the free trip was impossible to get. We will call you on Monday sometime in the next 2 months, then you need to fly out on Tuesday and come back Wednesday. Asking a woman when her baby is due. Doesn't really need a story. It went as imagined. I was offered a Lay's potato chip covered in what I was told was blueberry sauce. Gross, but bearable. Put the whole goddamn thing in my mouth, and it turned out to be blueberry ghost pepper sauce. Screw that guy. Every man eventually learns the lesson that muscle rub should never be used to treat a pull or similarly place ailment. Cave exploring. The serious kind, with lights, helmets, and occasional crawling. Fascinating while you're doing it, but scary as hell in hindsight. Ample opportunities to get seriously injured or worse, in the last place in the world you'd want to be rescued from. I worked as a tower hand for a construction company. I used to take of my land yard, and move between booms. 500-600 feet up. I also would slide down the outside legs and tethered, because it was faster than climbing down the ladder. I cringe when I think about that there was zero chance of survival if I fell. My wonder what's inside the medicine capsules? What if I just eat that directly instead of swallowing the pill? Empties onto tongue and promptly gag. You need to be careful with that, with some medicines, that are designed to be time released, that is a good way to overdose. Ag. Tastes like. Dies. Awful way to go to be sure. I wouldn't want the last thing I tasted as I die to be. Well, yeah no, not. What if it was really good? Like the kind worth dying for. And, worth fighting for. Back in the days before soft contact lenses you were supposed to clean them with hydrogen peroxide, and then use a special neutralizer tablet afterwards. I forgot to use the neutralizer, before I put my contacts in. Hydrogen peroxide in your eye hurts. Once I made two terrible food decisions in a single day. This was years ago, when I was in my middle twenties. I woke up hungry, and went to the fridge to grab some leftover Taco Bell. But I'd accidentally forgotten it in the car overnight. Still, I thought if I microwaved it, it'll be fine. So I ate a Taco Bell chicken quesadilla that had been sitting out for over 20 hours. Just as I was finishing it up, my buddy called and begged me to join him on a just friends hang session with this girl he was trying to date. They wanted to go to this Asian seafood place I'd always seen driving by, but never been to. So we go, and they have a kind of mini seafood super platter that's meant to feed the whole table. Like a super sampler. We get that, it's supposed to feed 6, but we finish it off as a party of 4. That afternoon, it began. My friend called and asked if I was feeling bad from the seafood, and I told him yeah, but it was probably something from earlier in the day for me. He said, yeah we are feeling a little queasy too, but we've got tickets tonight, so we are just gonna drink water and go for it. I got a date woo. I wished him luck and went back to Fallout 3. A few years ago, I was leading a missions trip to Vietnam slash Cambodia with a large group of 20 somethings. There was a dude on our team, who was a recovering, addict. I had no idea, but leadership knew, and did not inform me. In light of this, and his issue with alcohol, leadership had the brilliant idea, to move him from the Japan team, and move him to the, Vietnam slash Cambodia team, so he could be with a guy who they felt, had a positive influence on him. If you've never been to Sagan or Phnom Penh, you can't go a block in the touristy areas without being solicited to buy some sort of, or a. Shockingly, he used, again, and convinced another one of our students that, is awesome and he should totally try it. We had to send them both home. It, sucked, being young and stupid enough to drink whatever mixed drinks my friends were handing me at the bar, when I was in college. This was about 8 years ago, and I was probably 22 at the time. Before this I had only ever really had beer. My friend knew the bartender at the place we were hanging out. 
She was making the drinks waaay too strong. I remember one of the last drinks I had that night was called Idia Smother. After we left the bar, I'm told I refused to stick with the group and ended up walking a few miles to the other side of town because I'm a complete idiot. At some point I realized I was super drunk and literally called the police on myself because I was sick, puking and lost. They ended up calling an ambulance, I had no insurance at the time, and it cost me $600. Apparently when you're that drunk the police won't just take you home, didn't expect that, and paid the price. Just came back from a 3 week backpacking trip with 5 other people. Trip was just originally just 3 others, my bf, brother and cousin, but 2 friends wanted to join. Jesus Christ, you gotta keep those trips intimate, and preferably, with family. The two add-ons didn't want to do any of the same stuff we did, couldn't keep up, didn't want to try any local food, complained about walking, only packed flip-flops, commented after 30 minutes at the Louvre that it was just a bunch of paintings, etc etc etc. Worst mistake. The original squad all chanted never again at least 50 times each the entire trip. So yeah. Never again. By midnight I thought I was going to turn inside out. It was so bad, I would have called 911 if my phone had been in the bathroom with me, but it was on my nightstand, and I physically could not get to it. I could hear it ringing occasionally, so I hoped that whoever was trying to call would stop by and take me to the hospital. It was the longest night of my life, but by early afternoon the next day, I was coming around. I tried to stay hydrated by letting shower water run into my mouth during the event. The toilet was right next to the tub and I could sit and hang my head into the tub at the same time under the shower head. So I just ran the shower on my head, crapped my guts out the back, and vomited my soul out the front. Turns out the calls late at night were my buddy calling to come pick them up because they had both had accidents at the concert. On their first date, they are married now. This was before Uber or Lyft in case anyone is wondering. They finally managed to get his uncle to get them. Never. Again. Rode an Amtrak train from New Orleans to Washington DC. I thought I was a prodigy by choosing coach seating over a sleeper car or flying as I was saving some money by doing so. Jump forward to 25 hours in the same seat. Dude next to me pulling a German EVS Poland invasion of the armrest. Baby screaming all night in the back of the car and I couldn't sleep. The toilet situation had deteriorated on board to the point where I would use elbows and my boots to open and close the door and flush the toilet as my fellow riders were baffled by the concept of flushing and utilizing a trash bin for paper towels. I've been awake 25 hours by this point and it's 3.45 am. If I ever do this, it's gonna be in a sleeper car. The savings. Murder on the Orient Express had the right idea, I was the designated driver for my son's 21st birthday. He was out with dad, and about 10 of his close friends, so I was pretty busy driving back and forth schlepping them all home. Finally, I get the call from dad that it's time, and our son needs to go home. My son is in the back seat with one of his friends, when I feel a hand come from behind and grope my boob, then quickly moves down to my inner thigh. My son then says, what do I need to do to get me some of that? We don't talk about that night. I was once in a bet to do an apple juice challenge in where I had 30 minutes to drink a gallon of apple juice. Not too hard right? Easy $5 to be made? Not so much. What my whole friends didn't tell me is that when you drink so much apple juice in such a small amount of time it all needs to exit the body, but whole style. What followed were the most intense, volcano blasting, a hole destroying hours of my life. It was like a fire hose spraying acid that some dickhead lit on fire. I didn't complete the challenge, I lost $5, and I even paid for the apple juice. Never. Again apple juice, never again. Was younger and way more stupid. Got the chance to score meth. And decided to get some to see what the hoopla is all about. Loaded all .3G that I bought. And chased the white dragon. Spent the next 22 hours alternating between jerking off. And being on all fours all around my house trying to find meth crumbs behind the fridge. That must've mysteriously gotten there. While I brought the baggie from the front door straight to my room. Snasty main. I've told this story before, and it's probably not the type of story you were expecting, but it fits the question so here you go. 
Okay so this requires a bit of backstory. When my wife and I first got together we lived in a tiny apartment and shared a twin bed. This situation continued even after she got pregnant. This of course substantially reduced my sleeping area. We slept in a spooning position. One night, when she was about 7 months pregnant, I awoke in the middle of the night and tried to readjust the blanket to recover myself. It often would end up bunched up between us, so I reached down to find it and pull it back up. There was some resistance, but I assumed that she had her foot on it or something. So I pulled harder and kept pulling, assuming it would come free any second now. At this point my wife turned her head around and angrily asked what the I was doing. Turned out that I was not pulling the blanket. I had grabbed the back of her underwear and was forcefully pulling them up her crack. I broke out laughing and couldn't stop for quite a while. She was substantially less amused and even less so after my explanation. So the mistake I will never make again is TLDR. Never tell an angry, rudely awoken pregnant woman that you mistook her underwear for a blanket. Especially if you're laughing hysterically at the time.